the market needed rehab specialists, you know, um, not so much, you know, not to say that they didn't need, you know, kids development training, but I, I started to see that people that, that were into what would be deemed personal training was effectively people that were elder or elderly or older because one, they had the, the income stream to be able to afford it because personal training isn't, isn't cheap. Um, and then I realized like my market is not my age and slightly older because it, it, it was deemed a luxury for a very long time um, to have a personal trainer and to drop a couple thousand rand a month on that. I started to see that I just wouldn't have the sustainable client base. I'd have people come in with a little bit of money, which I had, um, would train for me for, with a cup, for a couple of months and then just fizzle out, you know? And then I thought yeah. there's no longevity in this for me. I yeah. can't be having a client turnover every couple of months. This is crazy. So the minute I moved over to, you know, the rehab side and, and the lifestyle training, um, which is why, I mean, it's, I call it lifestyle training. So a lot of my clients, you know, I, I've actually categorized them myself. One would be a lifestyle client. One would be uh, a sports specific client. One would be a, a total post-op rehab client. Um, you know, and then I saw the lifestyle approach where I can keep, for example, I mean, you know, Lisa's dad, I mean, and in, in his 70s, he's still skiing, you know, and he's one of my clients. And that's a lifestyle client. If I can ensure my clients are still skiing in their 70s and, and being active at that stage um, of their lives, then, you know, there's, I can guarantee you now he's stronger than when he started with me three years ago. It's, it's mm. remarkable, mm. you know. So that's really what I, what I moved into. Um, and then at the same time, I, I did a, a course called Exercise is Medicine. So that's, that's run by um, the American Council for Sport. Um, and we've obviously, we're basically like the, uh, let's say sort of hosts, if you like, for the African continent um, is, is in South Africa. And there's not that many exercise is medicine qualified trainers out there. So it is extended learning on top of PT, personal training, but what it does is it allows you to now work with special populations, um, which basically is like people with, uh, there's a condition called dyslipidemia. Um, so it's all your high, high, hypertensive clients with high blood, blood pressure, HIV clients, arthritic clients, um, pregnant, you know, basically uh, what would be deemed special populations, not from the normal healthy, not to say obviously pregnancy isn't healthy, but I mean, you know, the, the higher risk type yeah. of patient. Mm -hmm. So you get certain levels that you can do, level one, two, and three, and that obviously allows you to train different categories of high risk. And the idea behind the exercise is medicine is um, that effectively we're, we're trying to get people off medication and showing them that exercise yeah. is how they will keep themselves healthy. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, I'll give you more info on that if, you, if you're interested, but ultimately that's then what I moved into that as well. And then I saw that's also a lifestyle type of, of client, you know, mm. um, and so even my clients that aren't high risk clients that come with no, you know, contraindications for training or anything, I started to adapt all the stuff I, I did from the exercises and medicine to their training. And then my client base just, you know, it grew ex exponentially the minute I broadened what, what I could cover. So, you know, people stopped going to, to physiotherapists and that kind of stuff because I took over all their rehab training as well. So they kind of figured if I did their training and their rehab, why would they go anywhere else? So I, mm -hmm. I created everything under one umbrella. Um, and that's really where I'm at now. Cheapers, so. Carl, I'm, I'm so impressed. You know, you, you're only the third trainer who I've interviewed. This is only, you know, just started. And I have to say, I, I have been stunned by what's behind the surface of, of you trainers. There really is a passion um, behind there. I don't think you can do what you do without it really meaning something to you and, and you, 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 you caring and wanting to help people live better. Um, it's, it's, been, it's been an eye-opener for me. And I mean, just to hear how you, it, it sounds like this industry actually found you. 
yeah, look, I mean, like I said, it was never, it was never my first choice, you know, and I'm, uh, you know, I've created a career around it now. And, you know, you, you go, like any job, there's ups and downs. So, you know, you, you often go, she's going to do this forever kind of thing. But yeah. I think ultimately, you know, for the age old cliche where they say you'll never work a day in your life if you're doing something yeah. that you absolutely love. Yeah. Um, you know, there's aspects like the hours, which are absolutely, they're horrendous, um, you know, that you would give up in an absolute heartbeat. But, you know, for the most part, I am doing exactly what one, I know I'm good at. And two, um, you know, it's, it, it's about, it, you know, I often, I often say to people, you can be the best, best, best personal trainer, the most qualified, the most intelligent, but if you don't have that communicative and, and people skills with your clients, there, there's going to be no longevity in your clients. Yeah. I have clients yeah. that, that have been with me for more than 12 years that are still with me, you know, so you build up a relationship with those clients and, and ultimately, unless they immigrate, they, they have no reason to stop training, yeah. you know, because, yeah. because they, they're getting everything they need as they did when they started. So yes, your initial, your initial question or statement of being thrust into it, it did find me. Um, and I just ran with it from there. So, so tell me, um, primarily now, b- before COVID-19, before lockdown, were you yeah. doing all your training at one facility or, or how did it work? Um, so, so the short answer would be yes, because um, I rent space in a in a private facility in Sandton, so all my clients come there. I did in the beginning start you right in the beginning years back with home visits because you know that was kind of what we did because we you know you just don't have a client base and also you want to keep your rentals low when you're first starting out because you're not earning that much. So your home mm-hmm. visits are great. But, you know, you start to get busy and realize you lose so much time in the day traveling between people's houses mm. and you could be banking up those clients. And then, you know, there's that tipping point where you earn enough that the rent, you, you know, it's not even an issue anymore and you, you're more viable to stay in one facility. I have one or two clients that have a couple of, uh, that have a gym at home or a bit of equipment that I go do house visits there, but by and large, I, I always preferred then not to, because like I said, of the time, the time management factor. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so one or two, so the short answer would probably be that 95% or 98% of my client base is at one facility. This was prior to, to COVID-19. Okay. And how have you handled the lockdown? Look, I mean, for, for the most part, look, the, the industry has taken a huge knock. It's, yeah. it, it, I cannot, I can't even put into words how, how bad, you know, how much personal trainers are battling. Mm. It's just, you know, myself personally, I've been very fortunate that a lot of my clients um, are, are, you know, I have that long standing relationship with them. So they understand that I can still provide them a service in a roundabout way, but I can still. Um, and, and by and large, I've have had a drop, a couple of drop offs, um, which I guess is par for the course. But having said that, I've also picked up online clients, you know, which, which is, is ultimately what I really wanted to move into at some stage anyway. So mm-hmm. Mm. You know, perhaps the blessing in disguise with COVID was, you know, it allows me to not me push those clients out, but ultimately bring in the online clients, which ultimately, you know, the quality of life would be better for myself personally, yeah. just because yeah. of the hours, you know. Yeah. Um, so, you know, by and large, my, my income hasn't shifted that much. So personally, you know, when you're asking me personally, it's, it's, I've been very blessed to be able to maintain my client base. Mm-hmm. Um, I have moved absolutely everyone to online systems. Mm-hmm. Um, and for the first now two months, everyone's been quite receptive and, and very diligent with doing those programs. Um, but there is going to come a stage where people are tired of, you know, and including my client base and, and across the board, people are paying for personal training at the personal training fees and only getting an app version of you, you know. So there will be, there will be a lot of work that, that myself and other trainers need to do to build up a client base now. So when you are doing a, a one-on-one 
online yeah. by Zoom or, or whatever, whatever you're using. I assume you, you can't really use um, equipment unless, unless your client's got dumbbells. Sorry, so this is the to go out. No, it's not. So, no, I mean, I guess, you know, I, I've kind of got a mixed bag between clients that have absolutely no equipment. Yeah. Um, and then clients that have a fair amount and then clients that actually stocked up at, at the 12th hour to quickly get everything before COVID. So I've had a mixed bag with being able to design programs there. Um, it, it goes without saying the hardest ones to design are the clients with no equipment because... Yeah. There is just such, you know, there's a hell of a lot of exercises you can do with your body weight. Um, and, and you become quite innovative in terms of five liter water bottles from Woolworths that have handles yeah. on them. You know, there's a lot of cleaning, uh, employing a lot of those kind of tricks and stuff. But yeah, look, it's very, very difficult, you know, to, to continuously churn out a different session all the time yeah. with people that don't have equipment. And do you feel that you can, uh, because I assume that your client will position the phone or the laptop or whatever it is that they're using in a way where you can see the whole body. So you can keep the, the, your client from being injured. Um, well, listen, I mean, there's no different to, you know, the, uh, very often, in fact, this morning before our, our chat now, I had a 10 o'clock client who's in Australia, you know, so she's wow. an ex-client of of mine and um yeah so it's like 3 p.m her side or, or 4 p.m i think it's 4 p.m and then i train her um five days a week on zoom and yeah this is a, she literally positions her laptop or her ipad she trains in the garden she's got a couple of equipment that, mm. that she uses and i literally prompt her exactly as i would as if i was standing two meters away from her there is no difference with zoom it's actually you know you don't get that interaction physically yeah. Um, but in terms of watching their form and all that kind of stuff, you know, there is no difference. So it, it is quite interesting. It's, it's essentially up to the, the client to get the equipment that, I mean, let's say I'm a brand new client of yours and you can say, well, look, if you can go to a uh, sportsman's warehouse, get a couple of dumbbells, get da, 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 all these things. And then, you know, with, with, with more equipment, it can be more effective. So, Let's That's say COVID was going to last the rest of the year and you, you did manage to get a client in each hour slot of the day. Um, yeah. With that, you could still earn a pretty good living. I mean, you're doing it from home. It's isolating, but it's, 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 better, than, it's better than nothing. Yeah, look, I mean, effectively, then your, your income would probably drop a, a little bit because your rates would certainly shift because you no longer have that in-person, you know, interaction. Yeah. Um, yes, if I, if I was able to fill every single hour like it would be or, or was and is when I'm at the gym, um, there's no doubt, you know, that you can um, or that you, that you wouldn't be earning, you know, a decent living. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm just so interested because it seems that the, the future of personal training is changing. I think COVID has kind of kicked, kick started it, but I was, um, the, the trainer who I was chatting to yesterday, he started going online about a year and a half ago. He started because he's a group trainer as well as a personal trainer. He thought there's no ways I can carry this into into my retirement period. I cannot yeah, physically, exactly. I cannot physically do this. So I, he, he was prompted to, to look online. He said he's had the best month he's ever had. Well, look, that's exactly it. And like I said, my income hasn't, you know, in the first two months dropped off. Although having said that people are, are actually dropping off, but you know, I've been able to replace them with online clients, which is yeah. Yeah, very blessed to be able to have done that. Um, but yeah, you know what, the, like I said, maybe that's a blessing in disguise with COVID, yeah. you know, I'd like to be half cup full with the situation and, and ultimately, you know, if I wanted to cut my 5am, 6am, I mean, I've been waking up at 3.30, 4am for the last 15 years, you know, it's oh just, I'm still young, I'm, I'm, I'm 33 and, and I'm already tired of waking up at, at four o'clock in the morning, you know, um, and this is the thing, I also got to the place where I was like, I don't know if I want to wake up at four o'clock for the rest of my life. You know, this oh, is ridiculous. No, I hear you. In terms, I hear you. Of, 
and, and everything, you know, having a family and being more present and getting home at nearly eight o'clock at night and leaving at quarter to five in the morning or four thirty. Mm-hmm. It's just a mm-hmm. surge, you know. So um, ultimately, I, I was in the process of, of building up my website. Okay. Um, so I now have I have my website live. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that hopefully is where I'm going to be able to shift a lot of my clients, not, not necessarily my current ones onto in online, but certainly build up an online client base that at some stage I can get to the place where I am working more human hours. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. I absolutely hear you and I don't blame you. I'd want to be doing the same thing. Um, and I, I have a feeling you're going to reach the exact place that you want to be. It just sounds like you've been so innovative since you started this. Look, I mean, look, what, what uh, I mean, you've done, it's brilliant. You know, truth be told, I, I probably am a little bit behind, you know, the, the trend as, as far as online training goes. because And this is entirely because I was really busy at the gym and mm-hmm. I was earning mm-hmm. well. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, I almost in my head thought, okay, I can build my website's on the side, it, it will be my side hustle, which ultimately will become my main hustle, hopefully in years to come. But it wasn't the priority because I was still earning, you know, I guess if, if I had had a huge drop off on clients, I probably would have really punted or, or completed the online and, and the website stuff a lot sooner. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was able to, to run them both. And now at this stage, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm able to still, you know, move straight yeah. onto that system. Uh, this is my 16th year of personal training. Um, I kind of got into it by default. Um, I was actually uh, at, at UJ when I left school. Um, I was on a sports bursary. And um, my, my whole plan was to be a professional rugby player. So I was there on a, on a rugby bursary. And um, one, I absolutely hated studying. I, I was... I was the, the typical jock in school that just wanted to play sport and had like no, you know, no sort of vision or, or ulterior, you know, alternative plan other than just playing sports. So I went to UJ and then naturally as, as what happens with sportsmen's injuries hit and um, I couldn't play for a period of time, which is actually, it was a really bad injury on my back. And yeah, then effectively I had to, you know, I, I couldn't just hang around and not study anything because of how the bursary was set up. So I absolutely hated varsity. It was, it was just my worst. So I, I decided once obviously the bursary was up because I couldn't play, I went into sports coaching um, and did a couple of courses, you know, and working with, with kids and pretty much adolescent, you know, from about five years old, I did like a lot of developmental work with, with children um, and started to specialize basically with like kids, kids training and kids development. Um, and then in that first year after school, I decided to do my, my personal training qualification. Um, and that was really just because my dad was like, listen, you're not going to sit at home and do nothing, you know, so you're certainly going to busy yourself. So I kind of just went and studied that. So it was something to keep me busy at that stage. And I thought it would complement, you know, the fact that I've always been like an avid sportsman and kind of just give me a little bit of, you know, improved sort of training techniques for myself and that kind of stuff. Mm. Um, and then I actually, I actually qualified like in the top three of, of my class that year and, and I got placed in a job and wow. the, the Institute that, um, that I did the course through, um, the owners were actually going off to, to have, she was going on maternity leave. So they said, listen, would you mind? I mean, we know you, you've just qualified, you know, and we'd like you to take over her client base while she's on maternity leave. And then you can build up your own at the same time. Um, and then, you know, when she comes back, then, you, you know, we're good to go. You can continue working in our facility and, and work from there. So I was like, okay, well, cool. So I kind of like just got thrust into, into personal training as soon as I qualified. I got a, an immediate client base, which, which is unheard of. Wow, you know? exactly. so so I was, fortunate. I, you know, I was, I was very blessed to be in that position. And I, and I still to this day have a very good relationship with the owners of that, of that institution. Um, 
And yeah, I mean, so, and then I just built my client base up from there. And, you know, I literally, I blinked again and I was doing all sorts of, you know, add on courses and extended sort of learning. And then it was five years, then it was 10 years. And now, now I'm here, you know, so it, it really was like, just kind of, it did kind of happen overnight. It wasn't my initial plan, but then, you know, the busier I got and the more I started to sort of see what, you know, what area I could specialize in. I then actually moved my training in the complete opposite. I, I moved from adolescent training to pretty much the aged, um, not, you know, not really 20s, 30s, 40s. A lot of my client base ended up being like over 50 and 60 and ended up being a lot of rehabilitation. So then I started to do case studies on, on rehab. Um, and I did all my practical hours at the um, orthopedic center in Rosebank. Gosh. And then I saw the, and then I saw the market was actually 